Hey, you ever heard of the Rotary Club? Well, let me tell you, I've had some wonderful experiences talking with people from various Rotary Clubs. Well, recently, a very good friend of mine, Pat Miller, who worked at the Mayapak Library for a number of years, asked me if I would speak to the Somers Rotary Club. Well, I went there to teach them a little bit about me, and I learned something about them that blew me away. They have a project that's right here in my heart. What a wonderful project. Today, you're going to learn about that project. You're going to find out that it connects to children of all type. My name is Vin Aquino. Our guests today are here from the Rotary Club to talk to you. Let's meet them. Pat, let's start with you. Okay. Uh, you've been with the Rotary not all that long. No, about a year or so now. That's and you members. have found a love. Mm -hmm. uh, can you introduce sure. the people who were here with today? This is Stan Hurst Perlman, who uh, was president at one point and is the incoming president for the coming year. And Stan actually kicked off this project years ago, and I'll let him talk about it more. Excellent. And Steve Ucko, who is Yuko, Yuko yeah. sorry. Um, who's also a member, um, and he's from which Rotary are you? It's the originally. Well, I am now vice president to be of mm -hmm. this club. <laughs> I was Very just good. in Yorktown Rotary, and I'm coming oh. back to New Rotary to work with this wonderful group. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a project that grabbed me right away. So I am absolutely going to turn to you. This was your brainchild a while ago. Talk to us about this On My Mind project. Sure. Uh, actually, my brainchild was to be very simple. I was president of the uh, Somers Rotary. Now it's the uh, Northeast Westchester Rotary Club 10 years ago. And I wanted to do something very simple that didn't involve too much work on my part. <laughs> so I said, let's get together with Somers High School. We'll publish the works <coughs> of students uh, I had no idea how we were going to go about it. I had no idea if we photocopy the material, but let's start and see what happens. <clears throat> no sooner did I announce the idea than one member said, wait a second, we do work with John F. Kennedy High School in Somers. They, uh -oh. they let us now use their facilities. Now it becomes two schools. <laughs> so let's do those, that school. Then another member said uh, he was the president, uh, he was the principal of a high school in Brooklyn, and uh -oh. he said, oh, my school would love to do something <laughs> like that. And so we brought in his school, and my nephew taught at a high school in Bushwick, uh, one of the lowest performing schools in, in uh, New York City that doesn't even exist anymore. Wow. Uh, and he said, my students would like to do that. So all of a sudden, we had four schools participating. Wow. Two well-performing schools in summer, summers and two inner-city schools in New York City. Then another member said, uh, you know, my neighbor is Billy Collins, <laughs> the Poet Laureate of the United States. Wow. Let's see if we can get him to write an introduction to the book. Wow. Uh, then, then uh, now, we had all these manuscripts. I had no idea what we were going to do from this point. And I put out an email to all our members, and I said, help. <laughs> what do I do? I have all these manuscripts. Who's going to help edit it? Uh, who knows anything about publishing? And then, lo and behold, one of our members, Martin Ashley, who's an attorney in uh, Somers, said, I have a publishing background. And all of a sudden, we had the means to publish the book. We had the means to find graphic illustrators to, to do the cover. Wow. We had typesetters. Uh, and then the final ingredient was one of our members, after all this, we decided to do all this, she said, why don't we bring the students all together <laughs> to meet each other? Wow. And that's what started the book, book launch segment of this project. So every year in, uh, in, in uh, May, we bring all the schools, we charter buses, mm -hmm. some of them uh, come by train. This year we had schools, uh, this year and last year in Harlem, they came up by Metro North, 
and, and of course, we also had to go out and find a way to pay for us, and we got funding from some very good contributors, uh, Mayapac National Bank, wow. Putnam County Savings Bank, uh, IBM, all local companies contributed mightily to this project also, and it's enabled us to print what was reported on in an article in the New York Times upon the first edition, a beautiful looking book, and that was the genesis it of the is. project. It's a beautiful book, and I had the wonderful opportunity to, uh, to be a speaker at that event. What a wonderful event, mm -hmm. and to hear those children to bring them up to the microphone and let them read their work. That work came directly from their hearts, gave them an opportunity to take their differences and demonstrate the wonderful uniqueness and to talk about some of the things that make them laugh and make them cry, frighten them. And some of the things that are in there are so amazingly moving. Now. I love the project, but we need to backstep a minute. What is Rotary? I guess that's for me. Oh, uh, since that's I've you. been there from the very Good. beginning. What exactly what? is Rotary? Now, this is one of the projects, but this isn't only what no, Rotary, no. Rotary does. Rotary, Rotary actually has a very uh, heavy international project. Uh, Rotary uh, has been around for uh, over 100 years. It was started in Chicago originally. Uh, we now have... Uh, we're in 200 countries. We have wow. 1.2 million members. Wow. We have uh, 31,000 clubs spread throughout uh, the world. Uh, we're the Northeast Westchester Rotary Club is based in Somers, but there is a very active Rotary Club in Mayapack also. There's one in Carmel throughout Putnam County. Uh, and they're in Westchester and, and our district that goes south, there are 46 uh, separate clubs there. Uh, we do a number of things. We're a public service organization. For example, members in our club helped build a uh, water filtration plant in Honduras, and wow. members actually went down and hands-on worked on the project. Uh, we helped uh, build a school in Haiti after the devastation of the earthquake, and again, members went down, worked on the project. But well, we do a lot of things locally. In addition to On My Mind, we do a coat and sweater drive that helps collect coats and sweaters with, that we distribute to the various community service organizations uh, to help people who need help. Uh, we also uh, provide scholarships for wow. students uh, who uh, deserve scholarships and need the funds because they represent the future of our country. And it's it's various business people and, and no. community leaders? No, it's, no? It's, uh, it's people who want to make their lives count. In our particular club, for example, a lot of people retired. Uh, the majority are probably retired. But people, in our case, people who feel there's more to life than playing golf and yeah. playing canasta mm -hmm and playing Mahjong. I think yeah. this, uh, this is a message for, for my wife and some uh, other people, but she's very active also, so I can't uh, do that. <laughs> but it's for people who really want to be very uh, active in using all the skills they've developed uh, during, uh, during their lifetime of working and put them to use to helping people, helping mankind, and helping make this a better world. So you, you meet at least once a month, have dinner together? We, we meet to twice, discuss a month. Idea, twice a month. Twice a month. Twice a month. And then you talk about the ideas and the projects yes. and the programs. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Guest speakers. Like, as you said, you were guest speaker. Yep, I was guest speaker yep. there. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I say, you know, I, I was pleased to be there and to meet these people and find out that they were so dedicated to helping others. And that's really what it's, what it's about. I've, I've gone to about five different Rotary clubs now, uh, down in Ardsley and uh, Yorktown and, and a few places, even all the way up near uh, Catskills, uh, because Sybil Luddington, from my Sybil Luddington book, uh, lived in Catskill for a while, so they asked me to come up. So I went to a Rotary Club all the way up there. Mm -hmm. And I'm just fascinated as so many dedicated people um, who just believe in helping others. Now this project, uh, 
again, is one that touches my heart because you're working with children. You're giving them an opportunity to speak. You're giving them a voice and allowing them to say what they feel. Now, Pat, you know an awful lot about that. Not only were you a librarian at Mayapak, mm -hmm. but you were the head librarian at Somers Library. Right, and before that, I was a children's librarian at Somers and a young adult librarian. So I worked with children this age who, you know, who contributed to this book. And as well as adult services, so you know. But so I you brought as your director. expertise to right. this, right. Mm -hmm. and you, hmm, <laughs> you brought the editing piece, and that's a difficult part. Tell us a little bit about your role in this. Well, actually, I have to be honest in this. Uh, I had, did not have to do much with this particular edition. I have done some in the past because I've been in Yorktown in between. I was there, by the way. That was a very inspiring keynote address. Oh, thank you. Because this is something, and it, it, it's always been close to my heart. Uh, I come from a background of education. And actually, I got started by being thrown in to teach English. <laughs> and that may have been a good thing, because I never learned how to teach the mechanics of the language. Mm. And frankly, I discovered when I found my special needs kids that they had a very rich vocabulary. You and I couldn't use it here, but I can tell you they were passionate. Oh, they yeah. wanted to tell me about themselves. And that's what started me in teaching them writing, because I discovered by coming in with a humongous tape recorder that they love to tell stories and yes. then to read them. Yeah. In fact, in this particular book, I have to tell you one, one little, a few lines caught my attention immediately. And feel free to read the piece. A girl from upstate, one of the things she wrote, and I realized they all have a story. Yeah, they all do. have heartbreak, love, and loss, the people around me. That says it all. And yeah. one thing I did my entire life, and one I really loved this, every school, every child had something written in that yearbook at the end of the year. They had to have something to say for that book, and I know they did. Yeah. And that's what I love about this. Uh, yeah. my, my first book was Kiss the Candy Days Goodbye, story of a 12-year-old with diabetes. And during the middle of the book, he gets diagnosed <laughs> with diabetes. And the doctor tells him that for the rest of his life, he's going to take injections. And he's going to have to give himself those injections, and he's going to have to watch what he eats and watch exercise. And basically, he's going to be different than a lot of people. And he said, I don't want to be different. She said, Jimmy, it's not being different. It's what you make of that difference that will make all the difference in your life. And when I read some of these pieces in this book, that's where these kids were coming from. That's they right. put their hearts on their sleeves. Mm -hmm. they, they told secrets. They told the things that, that meant something to them. And often, as much as we want to not believe it, sometimes our educational system and our society says children should be seen and not heard. There's nothing more wrong than that. Yeah. And I believe children should be heard. You have given them the opportunity to do that. I think, Pat, you have something that you yes, wanted to share. Yes, um, it's, it's really touching, you know, some of these stories. It really does come right from the heart, as you oh, said. Yeah. And this one girl, um, it's not like difficult to put it in writing, but also to read it in front of a, oh, an yeah. auditorium oh. full of people. And this one girl who is from the Westchester Exceptional Children's School, um, had cancer on her face and so you can see the disfiguration but she wrote that um, I guess you can tell I'm thankful and it starts out dear cancer I'm not quite sure how to express my thoughts or vividly share what I think about you but I think I guess it wouldn't hurt if I just let loose and breathe I've met amazing people in my childhood and teen years because of you but there was also a downside whenever it involved me going outside didn't anyone ever tell you it's not polite to stare? <laughs> Wide eyes on me, wondering, whispering, and stuck with an idea of my cause, even though they wouldn't know the actual reason behind it. They wouldn't know my story, but if they would just ask, they would understand the reason behind my unique look. 
Wow. So I think it really took a lot of... Just, I mean, and I watched that girl yes. stand up yeah. there. Amazing person. And, and mm -hmm. she was obviously had a disfiguration. Mm -hmm. Didn't matter. Inside, there was a girl right. strong enough to get up there and say, hey, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. And to be able to say that, to be able to come to grips with that, and to put it in writing is so valuable. Mm -hmm. It's helping our children be who they are. And having it in here, uh, especially, and hopefully, this is used in classrooms. Yeah. We used to use the children's stories. And can you imagine what this will do for a discussion in a classroom? Oh, yeah. What a wonderful way, yeah. not only to inspire them. Of being who they are. And, and that's yeah. what writing, you know, I am a bibliotherapist. In my writing, what I do is I use writing as a therapy. I, my first book was diabetes and being different and dealing with that difference. Uh, Return of the Cicada is about a young boy with AIDS. Uh, Sybil Luddington who was a female hero of the Revolutionary War. Mm. Female. I mean, for years, when I was growing up, American heroes were white males. Mm -hmm. Paul you know? Revere, not yes. Sybil Huntington. We yes. didn't hear about That's her. Right. And, yes. you know, and, and we mm -hmm. didn't recognize some yeah. of the minorities who were not minorities. Mm -hmm. They are important beyond belief, and they have to accept that importance and know it, and they have to bring themselves to the forefront, and writing can do that. And some of the people who have read this little girl's poem say, I have a story. They all have a story. Right. We all have a story. And if we don't give them a forum, it'll mm. never happen. So this is, this is so valuable. So you, you had to do a lot of editing, a lot of work, but did you find that some of them are like, uh, it makes me think of the Fonz. You know, remember the, uh, the, the, the TV show mm -hmm. uh, where he takes the comb out of his pocket and he stands in front of the mirror and he goes, ah. <laughs> and then he puts the pot, comb back. Some of these kids have never had that opportunity. Mm -hmm. They look in there and say, I am okay. Sure. I have a story to tell. Yeah, what we found uh, in the readings, and we don't do too much editing because we want the kids to speak yeah, in their own do voices, it, yeah. but what we found is that children, and I'm saying this as a father, children will express themselves in a media like this that they won't do to parents. Oh, yeah. And maybe not to other friends, but this seems to give mm -hmm. them the freedom, and Steve is... Uh, very experienced educated this seems to give them the opportunity to be totally honest mm -hmm. yep it's neutral and, territory well, you have yeah. to understand mm -hmm. the teachers however have done a good deal of work with them too as far as editing and whatnot in the classroom yes because and i think that as you said is an important part of a kid telling a story he's got to know that there's also work in production and publishing oh, yeah. a story. That, that so. You don't write a story, you work well, a story. And I work with the editing end too. I've worked for years with BOCES and they have the YAC, the Young Authors Conference. They bring yeah. children from all over Westchester and Putnam County and they bring them together, over 300 children who English teachers have said this is who we want to send. And they take them out of school for a day. They have authors, editors, uh, publishers, people to give them a sense of the world of writing. And they bring them together with these different workshops. I did a workshop called Co-Ed Naked Writing. And the whole idea was come here and bear your soul mm -hmm. and understand that you are exposing yourself when you write but you have to accept yourself first and these children come and they write and they and and saying children but some of these are like 17 year olds and the, the writing is unbelievable before that in December we meet with a smaller group and edit work and talk about how do you make this piece 
work for you? How do you say what it is you need to say? And understanding that there's so many ways to say the same thing. Are you saying what you need to say? Are you communicating not only what you want to say, but what you feel? Mm -hmm. And once they hear that and they get that, the things I've, I mean, divorce and homosexuality mm -hmm. yeah, and, right. and some yeah. of the things Sexual that, abuse and, and in, that, yeah. every day, yeah. mm -hmm. every day they yeah. turn on the TV and they hear about who's dying in Iraq mm -hmm. and who's dying here and whose brother's going to war and, and who's being killed on the streets in, in some of the smallest uh, bedroom communities. This world is so irrational right. and you're trying to ask them to see it in a rational way. It's frightening. It's frightening what these kids are growing up to see and then to have them learn how to say it so that other people can see what they see. Right, especially at this age because they're not quite children and they're not quite right. adults. Yeah. So whatever they decide That's now important. is going to probably be the rest of their lives. That's right. So you want them to be honest with themselves, as you yep. said, and to express these feelings in some way, whether it's um, written word or in verbal, uh, whatever these skills, these are skills yeah. that they're going to need for the rest of their lives. That's right. So we're giving them a channel to and, start. And mm -hmm. s some alternatives to this, the internet, mm -hmm. internet scares me to death. Because, I mean, you are publicly, this is one way to publicly bring yourself, but at least you can mm -hmm. edit it and mm -hmm. think about it mm -hmm. before. Some of them use some of those feelings just yeah. Mm -hmm. without thinking and yeah. they send it out to the world mm -hmm. and then they they regret what they've done so this tries to show them the importance of editing and revising and thinking mm -hmm. and that sometimes writing is a process you right. don't just talk and think later this teaches them the process mm -hmm. of writing mm -hmm. and it's, it's just invaluable and I just love what you're doing mm -hmm. uh, I think there was another piece. Was there another piece that we were going to read? Yep. Good. There's another one. As I said, there are a lot of um, very... There's so many. I mean, it's so hard to shoot. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm stuck. Okay, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> yeah, there are some things that are difficult to um, to grasp, but they're, as I said, they're honest with themselves and yep. they put it down in writing. Yep. This one is called My Sinking Ship. In the winter of 1965, a ship set sail but never returned. This ship held precious cargo my pride, my voice, my stability. And nine months later, Memorial Day of 1966, I waited at the docks for its return, but I was met only by the image of a sinking ship. I dove in to gather the remains of what was left floating of my life, and all I was able to retrieve was a newfound despair and a scarring depression. You see, getting pregnant at 16 is like placing an iceberg in the belly of the ocean and steering your ship in its direction. Wow. So, yeah, they're very touching. I mean, some yeah. are more mundane, but some of them are really, you know, very, very, you know. So this is a non-profit organization. Right. It's a non-profit project. Mm -hmm. You do sell copies of the book to try to raise funds to pay for the book. Uh, so these books are offered to people to give them an opportunity to hear these children and to give these children a voice. Uh, and they're available on the Rotary uh, On our website. On, on website. the website, mm -hmm. yeah. So that they can do that there. And it's basically right. a donation uh, to help to fund, fund the, the project. project. Right. Yeah. Every, right. every Rotary Club also has a Rotary Foundation. And whatever monies would come in would go into that foundation. As Stan pointed out, uh, a number of the charities and a number of the projects we've done require money. Yeah. And that comes out of our foundation and very often matching grants from Rotary itself. Right. And by the way, our district involves two countries because Bermuda is also part of our Rotary really? district. Really? I just got back to Bermuda. Which makes for very interesting. <laughs> We're the only district that sings God Save the Queen in this country wow. at our district events, <laughs> which is also a very interesting part yeah. of our Rotary experience. Wow. Yeah, this, I mean, it teaches the children to give back. Mm -hmm. And that's what you all do, and that's what I love about Rotary. The fact that Rotary is giving back. It's trying to get out there and help people help themselves. Well, the Rotary theme for this year will be a gift, be a gift to the world. Wow. That's the theme for the year. Well, this certainly is a gift to the world because, it's, again, 
is an opportunity. We're trying to teach children to say what they feel. And this is a wonderful way to do it. Get them the right, get them to know who they are, and then bringing them together. You know, I just so much enjoyed being part of that program. Eating pizza together and watching those children and watching those children interact and watching them get up and walk to that microphone as if they were walking to the next room. Yeah. And they got up there and it wasn't like, a, I don't want to do this. It was like, this is my turn. Mm -hmm. And they got on that mic and they shared very precious That's moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if people go to our website, they actually can see the pictures of the uh, book launch that took place and see all the children Wonderful. coming together. And, and, and I urge them to hear the children speak, uh, to look at this book, get a copy of this book, and, and this isn't just a one-year deal. You've had books now. How, how many years this is, is this? The 10th edition. The 10th edition. Tenth the tenth mm -hmm. edition. Mm -hmm. So I want to make people aware that now, are these are in any libraries? Can they go to the library? Somers has almost all of them, and whatever other libraries. Um, so they can go the to the Somers Library, yes. and they can get a book from five years ago, yes. ten years ago, right. and read about those children right. uh, and what they had to say. Mm -hmm. And you're already starting on next year. Can you, do you mind telling me the schools that were involved in this? Mm -hmm. Sure, Pat. Um, Okay, the ones um, we've got, uh, well, Somers, of course, high of school, course. and um, Kennedy Catholic High School, and the Academy for Social Action in Upper Manhattan, uh, Lehman in the Bronx, and Stuyvesant in Lower Manhattan, Sullivan mm -hmm. West in Jeffersonville, New York, Thornton High School in Mount Vernon, West Hill High School in Stamford, and the Westchester Exceptional Children's School in North Salem. Wonderful. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, what you have just heard is a group of people who are trying to help children talk to you about who they are, giving voice. We must allow the children to be heard. Thank you so much for what you do. Thank you. Thank you for this Thank book. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity you've given to so many children. It has been an absolute pleasure to have you here today. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Continue tuning in to this show. When you hear the word rotary, think about people helping other people. Thank you for being with us today, and thank you for talking writing.